Aloha. Today I'm going to show you how to grow taro, or also known as kalo here in Hawaii. The taro is pretty easy to grow once you get it set up and it spreads really quickly. So I planted a bunch of taro in this area here not too long ago and now they're like everywhere. It's already made it all the way back there, right? I did not plant that taro back there. That's like 20 feet from me. Just from planting it here in a year, it made it 20 feet away from here. So this is my potato bed. I've got a couple different kinds of taro. I've got cassava and I've got sweet potatoes in here. And I've already worked this soil a lot for years, so it's very rich, it's very dark, and it's got really good fertility. If you're planting a new taro bed, you're gonna have to really work that soil if you want it to grow well. If you just stick it in soil around here, they're not gonna do that well. I mean, they'll grow, but they struggle and you're not gonna get much of a root. So I don't need to do anything to this soil. I've already uh, worked it for three years. It's really nice, it's really rich. It's really nice and fertile. It's got good drainage. If you're starting a new bed, I would add a little bit of drainage. Uh, here I use cinder. You could use sand or something else to give it some drainage. It doesn't need a ton, but some drainage, some mulch, wood chips, things like that to get like the soil to where it has some drainage so things can flow. Taro likes to be moist, but not like these varieties don't like to be soggy all the time. So my soil I make, it has some drainage. I probably put 10, 15% of cinder in there. And then I put mulch, compost, things like that. Um, and I also put some chicken manure, but you can put another fertilizer in there. I have a lot of chicken, so I use chicken manure. So if you start a new bed, I till that all up, get it nice, put some cinder in there or some kind of drainage, put some chicken manure or some kind of fertilizer, uh, put some mulch, compost. Taro really likes a really rich, fertile soil to do its best. And there's many different ways you can start taro. So you can buy a taro root from the store like this. Okay, I harvest this off the property, but you can buy a taro root from the store or for a friend or from a farmer's market, and you can just cut that top off. And then this will start rooting and grow a completely new taro plant. So you can just plant this as is in the ground right away, and it will start growing. You got to keep it nice and moist. Or you can even root it. You can put it in some water, leave that in there for two, three weeks, and let it root and then start growing. And then you can plant it like that as well. This one's been sitting in water for a couple weeks. It's got a bunch of nice roots. It's got a little top coming up. This bad boy's ready to go. This one here has been in there for about three weeks. It's got a bunch of nice roots. It's got one leaf ready to go. So this could be planted ready to go. You can also buy a taro plant in a pot. So if I got one right here that I started a while ago. You could get this from uh, the store. Home Depot even might have some. Uh, farmer's Market. Craigslist, whatever, friend, find a taro plant, and then you can plant it right out of the pot. If you already have taro growing or you know a friend that has taro growing, you can go and get some slips that come out. So this just shoots off of the taro, um, the main mother, she shoots off like tons of these, and you can just have them pop one up. This one's really nice and big, and then you can plant that. It doesn't matter how big it is. Here's a smaller one. Here's a real small one. So these will shoot off the mother, and you can plant any one of these. The smaller one obviously is going to take longer to grow, to be uh, developed and ready to eat. Alrighty, so once you got yourself some taro, you're going to need to de uh, develop your soil, you know, work it in, get it nice and loose, get some drainage in there. But if you already have soil that you've worked on, like me, I like to use this thing. It just breaks the soil up real easy. And if you're planting one of these, you know, I just put it down a couple inches. Um, if it's a bigger plant, farther down. Um, but the thing about taro is the root doesn't actually grow down, it grows up. So as you plant this, these are going to keep growing leaves, and then this taro root's going to be growing up, up, up. You're going to want to put some mulch on top of it every couple months or so as it grows to keep it covered so it's not sitting out in the sun getting hard. So... Let's go ahead and plant one of these tops back here. You can see this nice and loose soil. It's got a nice crumble to it. It's got some twigs, uh, mulch, you know, pieces of wood, things like that. It's got good drainage. It's got some rocks in there. So you could clean this up and take all this stuff off of here if you wanted. Um, not really essential. It doesn't matter. So 
I'm just going to make a spot here for it. You don't want to bury the whole thing. I just only want to bury it about halfway down. If you bury it too far and all the way underneath and it's raining a lot, it could rot and not grow and then kill it. So I just put it about part way down just like that. And you're going to want to water it, of course. Bam, you've planted your first taro plant. You're doing amazing. So, I've got a few other ones here. Plant this long one. That one you can actually plant deeper because it's already pretty big. Got some rocks in here. Wow, that's a big rock there. Now you don't want too many rocks and things around the taro. You want the soil to be kind of soft and fluffy. That way the taro root can get bigger and bigger and bigger. If you're growing it around a bunch of rocks and logs and it can't grow very much, it'll still grow, but it'll suppress its growth so it won't get huge per se. And you don't want to plant these too close together because they put out a lot of babies, but I've got so many plants that I still plant them fairly close together. I'll plant this one maybe a foot apart. If you don't have a lot of plants and you've got more room, you know, put them two, three feet apart and give them plenty of room because the mothers are going to put out tons and tons of babies. Like this, this one here, I put one plant here maybe a year ago and it shot out like 25 babies. So this one, I'll plant a little deeper because it's already growing. Put that there. Make sure to give it some water. You want to keep these moist until they're growing well. Now here's why it rains all the time. So I don't really have to worry about watering these too much. Uh, but if it is dry summertime and it's not raining much, you want to make sure to keep them moist. Not soaking wet, but moist. And then after they're rooted and growing good like these, I don't have to worry about them. Even if there's a drought and it's no rain for a couple weeks, they'll survive. But while they're rooting and getting growing, you do want to keep them moist. Now once you plant these, you want to have mulch. And this is some mulch here that's been sitting for probably six months. It's just ground up plant material. Everything all ground up. I get it here from the uh, organics facility. Pretty awesome. So taro likes a lot of richness. It likes a lot of plant material going back into the soil. That's why this soil is so dark. It was brown when I started, but now it's like a black color because of how much mulch and compost and things I put in here. So I will put some mulch around this. The mulch will also help keep it moist and keep the moisture in and will help the worms, the microbes, all that stuff stay happy, the fungus. That way it doesn't dry out too much. All righty. So I just put a little bit of mulch to get started, maybe an inch or two, and then I'll water it again just to get that mulch nice and moist. And then I won't really water these until it needs it. So if it rains tonight, I won't water them for a couple days. If it's really hot and sunny, I'll check them. If they're getting dried out, I'll water them. But taro's pretty hardy. So the other thing I'll do is after these are getting growing and they have a few sets of leaves, I'll put some chicken manure around here. Um, but since they're just getting started and they have really fresh young roots, I'm not going to really put much fertilizer in here. There's already plenty of fertility in this soil. So once they have like two, three leaves and they're growing uh, and they want more, I'll put some chicken manure on top of the mulch. So the mulch has all the carbon and the chicken manure has the nitrogen and everything else. So you put the mulch down and then you put the chicken manure on top and that nitrogen will help break down all the carbon and unlock all these nutrients in here. And every so often I go around and put lime around the property as well. Sometimes I put a little bit of lime when I'm planting stuff here and there. I don't really go crazy on the lime. Probably should use it more often. So that's the basic for planting taro. I'm also going to plant this potted one here. So I'll make a little bit bigger of a hole. And if you're, if you're planting a potted one, you want to make the hole bigger, have it plenty of room, a lot of loose soil around it.
And besides the chicken manure, I'll also do like compost teas. Um, I have some liquid fertilizers I make from the plants around here, and I'll spray that around every once in a while as well. The more nutrients you give it, the happier it'll be to an extent. Obviously, you don't want to over fertilize it. That'll cause problems as well. You really want to be in that happy medium. You don't want to under fertilize. You don't want to over fertilize. Got some roots down in here, probably from the cassava. More rocks. But this soil is really good. I've been working this soil for a few years. Lots of mulch, compost, chicken manure has gone into it. So this one's for the potted taro. I'm gonna make it a lot bigger. We're hitting some rocks down there. I definitely take out any large rocks. And I loosen it up even farther so it's got a good three, four inches of loose dirt down there. And before you take the tear out of the pot, you're gonna wanna water it really well. So the roots are nice and moist. I've already done that. Pop that out. Look at all those roots. She's ready to go in. And then just fill in around her. Pat around it. I don't pat like super crazy hard. I just give it a little pat. Give her some water as well. Always want to give the plant water when you're taking it out of the pot before you do that and after. That way the roots are not as shocked and damaged. The least amount as possible. Put some mulch around there. We've got a helicopter coming by. Some more water. Now since this one, it was in a pot, it's already been growing for a few months. It's growing, uh, it's healthy enough. You, I could put some chick manure around this or some fertilizer and it wouldn't be a problem. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and plant these last two ones here. Nice earthworm here. So many earthworms in this soil. That's how you know you got some good soil, plenty of earthworms. Alrighty. We got down here. I'm gonna go ahead and plant one of these guys in here too, since I'm here. Might as well just plant them all. And with this, you really need to plant it, you know, down a ways because if you just plant it here, there's no support, it'll fall over. So you gotta plant it a ways up so it has some support, so it doesn't just fall over. And the other thing you wanna do is if you have chickens, I always put some logs around all these taro right along the bases so the chickens can't dig them out. Because the chickens love digging in this fresh new dirt. They'll dig these out, they'll fall over, they'll dry out, and they'll die. So if you do have chickens or other animals, wild pigs, anything around, make sure you 
put logs or something like that around them to protect them. Another one of these guys. You can see it's pretty quick and easy. And you can plant a lot of taro pretty quickly. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We got seven taro plants already. Plant this tiny little one in here. All right, eight taro plants. Now, if you have plenty of space, you can plant these a lot farther apart. I've got so many plants, so many taro, I don't have that much space, so I just plant them wherever I can. Uh, I'm spreading them everywhere. Taro is one of the best food sources, in my opinion. If you want to get food quick, you don't have to wait several years like a fruit tree. You start planting them, you can have the uh, food within eight, nine, ten months. And then once you get it spread, and I've got like thousands of taro plants now. They're everywhere. So I've got starch, carbs in the ground all over the place. So if something happened, there was a collapse, you just go around, start digging up roots, spread them around more, got yourself some food, and there's a lot of calories in taro. So if you got some taro, and then you catch a boar or something, you got yourself a real good meal. Alrighty, put the rest of the mulch around these. And in a couple weeks, I'll come back over here, and I will put some fertilizer on here. I will be using chicken manure since I have a lot of chickens. Alrighty, I'll show you how to make taro in another video, especially poi. That one's really good. More water on them. So that's eight taro right there we just planted. Pretty quick. You can see it's pretty easy. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can buy the plant. You can get it from a friend. You can cut the top off a of taro. A lot of different ways to grow taro as well. So what I'll do every month or two, I'll come here and I'll put a little bit more uh, mulch. I'll put a little bit more of this mulch and I'll just keep stacking mulch up and up and up because if I add nutrients, it'll keep it moist and I'll put some more chicken manure on it every, you know, maybe a couple months um, because the tear root grows up. So as it grows up, it's coming out of the ground, put more mulch, cover it up. It grows up, more mulch, cover it up. And you just do that three, four times over the next nine, ten months and you'll have some beautiful, beautiful taro roots. Alrighty, there you have it. That's how you grow taro. Let me know if you have any questions about tarot or anything else down in the comments. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it and you're still watching. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Aloha.